When I was 15, yeah. I stepped on stage at a place called the Iron Horse in Northampton. The Iron Horse, yes! I went to the Iron Horse. My parents had to drive me because yeah. I didn't have a license. Yeah. This was my first joke ever. My mom and dad were in the front row. My mom had one of those disposable zip, zip, click, you know, one of those cameras, right? <laughs> I walked on stage. My mom and dad were in the front row. I was 15 years old. I said, hey, everybody, I'm Josh. I'm 15. I'm really nervous. My mom and dad are here. This is the first f- time I'll be able to f- swear in front of my c- second mom. <laughs> the place blew up. My mom and dad didn't laugh. <laughs> Man, my dad, it was a silent car ride home. And my dad, when we got out, he was like, you're going to have to find your own ride next time. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Yeah. So, so worth it. Killer so John. worth it. Today's podcast is brought to you by SeatGeek. Get $20 off your first order when you use my code NASH. <laughs> Guys, what's up? We're here with Josh Wolf and Jacob Wolf. Uh, so great to have you guys here. i um, been watching your stuff all morning and probably one of the most unique things going on YouTube. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you, man. Your incredible stand-up and, uh, and then you reacting to some of his clips and you guys go on stage together now and you're becoming a stand-up as well, too. Yeah, yeah I've, I've been doing stand-up for like the last 10 months. So it's great. been, a, it's been a, a, an amazing ride, for sure. I, I read a, a really great comment which, you know, I want to like praise your dad, which is like, it was praising you. And it was like, wow, it's so cool that he gets to go be with his dad. And, uh, and what an entree into stand up comedy. Uh, abso- you know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, being with my dad on the road is great, you know, yeah. obviously because he pays for everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, but the you know, the truth comes out. <laughs> But you know, I, I definitely have the uh, the privilege and ability to be able to uh, get better at such a faster rate. Yeah. Being with someone who's been in the game for as long as yeah. he has, that's not me calling you old. It's calling you experience. It's calling called you experience. Right it's wisdom. Um, but it's so being able to come off stage and be like, you know, I really like that, but I feel like it was missing something here. To then turn to him as a mentor and be like, you, I like this. Switch these words. Take this out. He's really helping me craft who I am and who I am uh, on stage at, at at a crazy race. So when you go on the road, do you go first and then your dad goes? Yeah, yeah. So I, I open for him and then uh, and then I intro him and then we usually do a Q&A uh, towards the end of his set where Great. people can just ask us questions about... People ask us questions about jokes, about uh, what it was like being raised by him. Some people ask us life advice. Not the best idea, but, you know, it's fun. We, and, have, we have a lot of fun doing it on and stage. And I bet they ask you quite a bit about the stories that have blown up on YouTube, which is... I told you this, like, uh, that type of comedy is just my favorite type of comedy, like, family-based, the story about you fighting him on the lawn, uh, <laughs> the story about you getting hacked, um, the, the g- watching someone get shot story. Oh, yeah, in Cleveland. Yeah, 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 insane. Where were you? Were Cleveland. You, Cleveland, yeah. I you was, were, oh, you were on the road. Yeah, we yeah. were in Cleveland. It was, uh, actually... I was 18. It was October of 2015. I remember it because I was at my only semester of college. I right. went to LSU for one semester, and then my he was texting me. He was like, "Come meet me on the road this weekend for a nice, fun, chill weekend." Yeah. Day two, I saw somebody get shot and killed <laughs> in an alley. It was really not, a oh yeah, one person killed. Oh, one, one of them died. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. One got winged. One got some wings. The person who uh, got winged, by the way, yeah. we met earlier in the day. She stopped us to ask for directions. I was high when he was like... That, Not too many people in Cleveland, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's about one, seven yeah, yeah, people. Seven people, and they're yeah. all walking in circles. Yeah. So you eventually... But I, I was like... Because I was high, the first thing I went to was, if she hadn't stopped and talked to us, she wouldn't have gotten shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. yeah, I was like, we did that to her. <laughs> you were thinking butterfly effect type yeah, stuff. I yeah. love that. But, but I will tell you, for me, like, a couple things. It's, it's the best time I've ever had in my life. It's so I've, awesome. I've done a lot of things in this business. Yeah. And a lot of, if, if you looked at my whatever, you might go, what about this? What about this? Traveling with him. Yeah. You know what I never knew, man? I never knew how lonely I was. <laughs> I just didn't. I never knew how lonely I was. 
Right? Plus the end of the story is so funny after you guys witnessed the shooting. You're oh. In, you're in the bed, and then Josh says to Jacob, he goes, he goes, hey, man, can you jump in the bed with yeah, me? Yeah, dude, I was... <laughs> and I, I don't, I'm not going to lie. I would have asked him if he didn't oh, ask yeah, me. Yeah, we oh, were yeah, both yeah, kind yeah. of in that I same I needed boat. a cuddle, dude. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was one of those where I was like, I don't feel like I'm 18 anymore. I feel like I'm seven. And yeah, yeah, I need yeah. my dad for this one. It was, it was definitely one of those scary moments, but I did come up with eight free bags of food. Everybody so. else ran away. <laughs> he yeah, stayed. Everybody got reimbursed for their order, and I stayed for the food. And he goes, do you want all this extra takeout? And I go, can my eyes, do my eyes tell you yes? Because I'll, I'll take all the food you want to give me. By the way, the reason, the only reason we were out, or I sent him out to get tacos. Yeah, don't say we. You sent me on the mission. Well, yeah, you, I mean, <laughs> I, it's nice not being lonely, but also it's nice having a runner on the road. You know? yeah. Yeah. Um, the only reason we went across the street and we didn't order room service is because the night before, I had ordered room service. A quesadilla, which for me is top five munchy food. Yeah. And they had served it with Caesar salad dressing. Yo, dude, I almost lit that fucking oh, place on riot. fire. I would I would riot. You know what? You know what? You want you want there. another you want another cherry on top? <laughs> Inside the quesadilla wasn't just like chicken and cheese. There was like corn, peppers, like a bunch of extra added nah, things. That's not a quesadilla. That is not a quesadilla. That's something else. I Can like, I tell you I when so I called pissed. down to the front desk, I was like, hey. You served me a quesadilla with Caesar salad dressing. And she was like, I'm so sorry. I will come up and get it right now. And I was like, well, I ate it. <laughs> I ate it. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, if I'm being honest with you. I guess just don't do it again is the purpose of the phone call. <laughs> I'm, it was good, but I... <laughs> It was it was, it was was doable for the time, for, the, for the, where we were. You're waiting for tacos... Yeah, I was somebody. Did you just hear gunshots? Well, so he, you know what the best part is, because I feel like we don't. I don't tell this part enough. I was also a little high, and so I went <laughs> into the restaurant and I asked somebody, "Hey, I'm waiting for a pickup order." And she said, "Cool." What I thought she said was, "Take a seat right here and wait for someone to come see you." I sat at the bar for 20 minutes waiting for someone to come talk to me. Yeah. She same waitress comes up and finds me 20 minutes later. She goes. You still waiting for your food? I go, didn't you tell me to wait right here? She goes, no, I told you to go to the takeout counter right there where oh, you could have okay. gotten your food 20 minutes ago. Oh, okay. So and now so, your tacos are cold. Well, well, and then the eight other free bags of food, though, made up for it. But had I not sat there for that 20 minutes, I might have already been upstairs by the time the gunshots happened, or I might have been in a yeah. completely different position. So... I thank myself that I was high that night what? because I got stuck at <laughs> the bar, just sitting there waiting for my quesadilla. Just like, oh, I can't wait to How go upstairs close and eat you this. To the actual person doing the shooting. Um. So based on how it was set up, right? So like the hotel was here. There was one street, and then literally right across the street, we could see the Is that bar. Alley? Yeah. Yeah, we could see the bar from our hotel room, and so I was just inside the bar. <laughs> I heard them all go off, and I go. Somebody setting off firecrackers? Mm. And then I heard everybody start running, glass breaking, and I go, those weren't firecrackers, were they? And the bartender looks at me and goes, no, those were gunshots. And I go, oh, okay. And so I'm thinking to myself, what are the rules for when you hear gunfire? Get away from the windows, anything glass. So I just stood behind like a four-foot thick cement pillar. And I was like, I'm going to wait here until the screaming stops, I think is the, the right. The screaming <laughs> stops. Well, because it was like, like just. Like it's a Godzilla movie. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in the restaurant was like fleeing or moving different directions. And I was like, I'm staying put in one spot because I think that's the rule. It's get away from windows and don't move around a whole bunch. I think and don't go to Cleveland. Yeah, that's rule number three. Yeah, yeah. The way uh, that she reacted there, she was like, oh, yeah, those are gunshots. Like it's just a regular Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was uh it, yeah, I was a little more shocked, I think, than everybody else was. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was just a crazy, because we had one more show, we had two more shows the next yeah, night. Yeah. And so, when I talked about it on stage, nobody seemed surprised. No. Oh, really? I was like, no. we saw somebody get shot out there, they were like, yeah. They were <laughs> that's like, terrifying. Yeah. They were like, yeah, welcome to Cleveland. And I was like, that, yeah. I don't know if that's the welcome I want for Cleveland. Yeah. Are you guys on the road now? Yeah, e every weekend, pretty every much. Every weekend. Uh, this weekend we have off, yeah. and then we're going hard... We don't have another weekend off until Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. Okay. Oh, my God. I shot a special last weekend in Vancouver, B.C. Great. And I did my brand new hour last night. And so I just want to I want to run it hard for the next three months. Right. I, to come up with new material. I have a new hour. Oh, you have a new hour. I just now I want to shape it. I, I want to tell you. So you shot a special and now you have another new hour. He. Can I tell you something about this, dude? Yeah. 
he has two specials already released on YouTube, two full hours. Yes. With all the other clips and everything he's released, he's probably got another two and a half hours just of clips online. Oh, yeah. By the time he films a special, he's already got his next hour and writing the next hour after that. My but God. It, it, like his brain is constantly, constantly writing down jokes, trying new things on stage. Um, he'll just think of stories and be like, yeah, I'm just going to try this and see what happens. And it turns into a 15-minute story that's part of his next special. Right. Like it's his writing and his brain are I love it. Extravagant. Yeah. I I love stand up. Yeah. I love telling stories. I am at a point in my life and this happened like 5 years ago. You know as you get older, I wonder if this happened to you as well. I love this business. Sure. But about 5 years ago, I was like, what's my purpose? What what am I doing? What am I providing? I don't want this. I don't want to be empty laughs. Am I helping the broad scope of the world? Yeah. And if I'm not, it's time to start over and find a way to have a purpose and help. Mm -hmm. And um, over COVID, I got more people reach out about how comedy does help. Sure. And how it does serve a purpose. And it reignited my passion and my brain. Um, the idea that I'm helping people in any way at all is really what fuels me now. It really is the best. When somebody yes. comes up and tells you, and they go, oh, I, I was really depressed, and I watched your videos, or I watched your stand-up, it is the best. It's the best feeling you could ever get. Uh, it's, so, it's so humbling to know that, yeah, okay, I'm going to do this without any tears. We hear stories in the meet and greets all the time. Yeah. And uh, I welcome them. Our meet and greets are really long. I do them for free. There's yeah. no VIP. Yeah. You come. If you're leaving your house to come see me, yeah. I'm going to give you three to five minutes of my time. Right. That's it. Great. And now, look, the venues are starting to get too big to make that happen all the time. Right. But if we're staying in a four or 500 seat place and it, that meet and greet is going to be two hours for us. I'm going to be awake for those two hours anyways. Yes. I am going to give back to the people who left their house, who got a babysitter. That's awesome. Who made plans. Yep. And I'm going to give you, if you want to just take the picture, some people are nervous. They take a picture, they walk off and some people have a story they want to tell, but I'm going to give you three to five minutes of my time. Yeah. It's a hundred percent the least I can do. And in Tulsa, this woman had lost her son. How many days before? Like two or three days prior to the show, something like that. <laughs> and they had... Um, and he was the one who bought her tickets. But they had watched my comedy together. And he was. she was like, I just feel like I connected with him tonight. We were watching together. And she grabbed my wrist and she just said, thank you, in such a deep... I'd never felt anything like that before. I'd never felt that it was so heavy. And I told him afterwards, I go, I got to, when this is over, we got to go back to the hotel. I got to get my shit together. But that was like, it, it, to be able to take some of that from her was like, it was one of the times where I said to him in the hotel room, we're doing the right thing. Yeah. We're on the right path. Damn. We're, we're helping people heal. What a, f what a credible honor that is, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't take any of that for granted. And listen, man, in 2018, maybe 17, I thought I was, I thought that was the end of my career. Mm -hmm. I had been told, listen, at, at a certain age, white dude, if you're not already at a certain level, there, this town is telling you to go home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, so that's 2017. Had Chelsea wrapped up by then? Yep. Chelsea wrapped up 2014. I think is what it was. Something my, like that. And Chelsea, so when you were on Chelsea, you're probably filling out clubs every weekend yeah. right that was a huge show huge show and i know from i don't know her but i know from a lot of people she was super gracious with oh my lord all you guys oh my lord making Ex sure that extremely. you know you all got time on there and were able to feed your families and all that i talk about that because I I, I I i want people to know the kind of person she is i i have nothing but admiration respect yeah. and good things to say about chelsea hamlin Mm -hmm. we're, we're I wouldn't consider us to be friends right now, but I don't right. know. Sure, that, that's sure. not important to it's me. It's not important, and, right? Right, right. Um, she gave us all. You know what? There, 
the best shows, and she knew this, she didn't need to be the funny one. And right. she was hoping the three the three people on the round table, she would do the topic, she would do her joke, and then if we were funny, she wouldn't say a thing. Yes. She wasn't a, a host that needed the laugh. She yeah. wanted us to shine. That's and awesome. she gave us all such a great platform. She let us tour. If you had a show, she would let you leave on Friday uh, and still get paid oh, wow. on Friday. Oh, wow. She, when we opened for her, she paid so much more. That I used to open for a guy named Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And, La- and Dan Whitney, one, yeah. one of the most generous. And he would, <laughs> when I used to tell people, this is what I get for opening, they were like, get the f*** out. Yeah. I told Chelsea, she was like, cool. She doubled it for all of us. Wow. <laughs> she doubled it. It's amazing. For all of us. And sometimes three of us would open for her, and she'd pay all of us. And if we did two shows, she didn't do you get paid this amount and then half the second show. She gave us full both shows. The most generous, the most gracious. You know, people take her, um, I don't know what, how to put it, her jokes or her attitude or personally. Yo, I want, if you and I are friends, I don't want a yes man. Yeah. I want somebody just like her. Mm-hmm. Do you, you know, there was a point in time I was about 35 pounds heavier than I am now. I'd gotten pretty comfortable. <laughs> and um, you I look was, great, man. Thank you, you very kept much. kept off the weight. I was walking you up the stairs. You're about 35. Did I'll take all about that? 30. <laughs> no need to boost his ego yeah. anymore than it is. You can keep it. It's all good. I was walking up the stairs at the studio, and I, I was that second flight, I was starting to get, and just from behind me, I hear, ugh. Your ass is disgusting. And I turn around and there she is. And she walks past me and she just looks at me and she goes, get your shit together. (laughs) It's one of my favorites. But I was just like, she's right. I shouldn't be struggling walking up these fucking stairs. Yeah. But she didn't say it in a way where like you're fired or she just said what everyone was thinking. This, This is not the way you're supposed to look. That's a good friend. It's a good. It's a good friend. It's, I, you need those people in your life. I, but she also, man. If you're in her circle and you're like, "Hey, I need you," you're gonna see her in ten minutes. Oh wow, she's gonna be there. Yeah. That's great. With whatever Lo- you need. Yeah, loyal she's ride or die there. kind of. Shit. Yeah. I, I, I so I, I have nothing but admiration for her. The other thing I want to get out to before we forget is Joey Diaz was your. Babysitter. Yes, Joe Diaz did baby. He's one of the three dudes who changed my diapers when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ralphie May I'm was sorry, another that, one. Just the mental oh, image oh, of that is yeah. like, it's awesome. Yeah, I had my. I, I was, <laughs> if I wasn't at home being watched by Joe Diaz, I was inside the comedy store green room waiting for my dad to finish his set. Like, yeah, I, I just that's. Well, actually, they they the comedy store wouldn't let you inside. The improv did. The improv comedy did. store. The other comics would watch you. I'd leave you in the minivan with your brother and sister. And they just want to just go sit in the car with us. Sit in the minivan with you. Hilarious. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. That amazing. might be funnier than being in the green room. In all honesty, <laughs> Joe That's... Diaz. There were two people. Uh, you know, when he was a baby, and when I was single, um, and I was raising my kids, there were two, three people who could put him to sleep when he was going nuts. Me, my brother Jonathan, yeah. and Joe Diaz. <laughs> Joe. I, I, Joe Diaz would come in. It's so funny. He'd come in, he would grab him and hold him tight so he couldn't scream or struggle yes, or breathe. Do. And he would go, turn on rage. And he would put on raging as a machine. <laughs> and he would just rock him until he went to sleep. The, the, the uh, two artists. You've been touched by the comedy greats, yeah. Jacob. The two you artists. You have it in you. You are going to be the best comedian of all time. Joey Diaz rocked you to sleep. To, to Rage Against the Machine. And, and Sublime's first album. And Sublime. Sublime's, Sublime's first Sublime. album was yeah. the one. You could yeah. put that on oh, no matter dude, what. Sure. But I also feel like Joe Diaz, it was... It, you know how sometimes you used, when you couldn't put me, Kate, and Trevor to sleep, you would take us in the minivan and blast the heat and pretty much just give us heat stroke in the van and then we'd be asleep? Yeah. That's kind of feel like what I feel like Joe Diaz's version was. He's kept, he would just kind of smother me. And yes. he'd be like, well, now you can't scream. Now you got to focus on breathing. And now we're not screaming as much anymore, <laughs> are we? And I feel like, I mean, it worked. Shit. I yeah. mean, I can't blame him. Can I tell you my favorite Joe Diaz babysitting story? Please, and can you do the voice? Because it's like he's Yeah, I'll here. do it the voice. Hey, Josh Wolf. Hey, Josh Wolf. So first of all, <laughs> he only ever called me by my first and last name. Hey, Josh Wolf, right? And so one day, here's how it would go. Now, at the time, Joe was, is in way better and healthier now than he's probably been since when I first met him. Yeah. Uh, by the time he had, I bet you he went 340, 350. Okay. And I can't, I don't think he's, if he's taller than me, maybe an inch taller than me. Yeah. He's not. I don't think so. And he never used to wear underwear. 
Now, sure. my I would consider him, for those of you who don't know him, he's a comic and larger than life dude. I would he's a I would consider him to be a moral criminal. Uh-huh. And what I mean by that is when I would leave a twenty dollar bill out on the counter, he would take it. But then he would take me out to lunch with the $20 bill. <laughs> and then he would say, I got it this time. You get it next time. And I'm like, you didn't really get it this time, but I understand what you're saying. Right? Right, right, right. So one day I, and people may ask why Joe and not a regular babysitter. And I would tell you this, a regular $10 an hour babysitter probably wouldn't swear as much in front of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> probably not. But Joey would jump in front of a bus for the kids. Sure. And to me, that was so much more important. And they loved him. And yeah. he had fun with them. He wasn't just like, you know, watching TV and letting them. They loved him. So I was this is so much more important. So one day, and what would happen is I'd do my set, I'd come back, and then he'd go do his set. Uh-huh. One day I'd come home. He goes, hey, kids, <laughs> your dad's home. Come on, pick up. And he bends over to pick up some toys. And my daughter, who was probably four or five at the time, ripped some hair out of his ass crack. And she goes, how many? And he goes, oh, it felt like five that time. I go, that time? What do you mean that time? Is this a game? Yeah. And he goes, oh, she loves that game. I go, yeah, but I hate it, dude. Yeah. I don't like it at all. Can't you play like Monopoly or something? Well, you got to pair, you got to play ass crack at the, at the crib. Damn. But man, the kids, and he loved them. Who doesn't love Uncle Joey? Dude, so you know? yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, was yeah. legit he my Uncle Joey life. before he was the world's Uncle Joey. Yeah. So, yeah. I, love Joe Diaz. I, I will say, man, there are a few people that I am extraordinarily happy for their success. Uh-huh. In general, I'm happy for everyone's success. I'm not somebody who begrudges. I don't think any of us are in competition with each other. I right. refuse to put art in that category. I'm extraordinarily happy for my friend Joe Diaz and where he is and where he got to. I know all the things in his life that he overcame. And to be where he is and to get to where he... Yo, he didn't start making money until he was 53, dude. Really? 53. It's crazy. Because between 0 to 53, or when he first got in the business, all people kept telling him is, you can't do that, you can't be dirty, you got to change who you are. And he never did. 53. Damn. In this city. That's like Rodney. Rodney made it when he was 50. Right? Something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. And so, and to know what he's been through in his past um, and what he's overcome and where he is now and how at peace he is, I'm, I'm extraordinarily happy for him. Yeah. And you, so you knew him in the beginning in Seattle. Yeah, man. I knew him, dude. I used to get collect calls from King County Jail. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you oh. said, will you <laughs> accept... Fuck okay, yeah, that call, call from, from King County it's Jail. It's fucking me. It's Joe Diaz. Yeah, I always, I always like how you say you consider him a moral criminal because then I think to myself, and an actual criminal. Oh, yeah. an actual you know criminal. what I'm saying? Like moral criminal, but also mm-hmm. actually a criminal. Um, uh, it, it, listen, but love starting him. with him and Brody. Well, yeah, Brody Stevens it, it, it was a friend of mine. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he passed away, and he was incredible. Do you know what was amazing? Yeah. Starting with the two of them. Yeah. I struggled. I'd be challenged to find two comics who ended up being more themselves than anyone else that I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah Unapologetically, yeah, yeah. themselves. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that the best when you when you know somebody from the beginning and then you you watch them find it? So cool. It's the coolest. It's so cool to be like, oh, all the wheels are on the track for this person right now. Yeah. Like, there's not one wheel that's kind of idling. All the wheels are on the track, and I'm going full speed. Yeah. And and can I tell you the first time we saw Brody be Brody? Yeah. So he was on stage, and he used to write these jokes like every young comic. And um, one night he's bombing only the way Brody could bomb. Yeah. Which was a unique bomb. Am I right? Yes. There was no bomb like a Brody bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, it was the first time we saw him snap and truly be himself on stage. And he was like, guys, I don't think you understand. Do you know how hard it is to be a single man I, at home? He said, I tried to get ready for the show tonight. Do you know how hard it is 
to be a, a guy who lives by himself and shave his own back. <laughs> and he goes, I've got trouble spots. And he lifted up his shirt and he had patches of Hilarious. hair that he couldn't reach. Oh my God. I had never seen anyone do anything like that on stage before, right? Because especially back then, it was pretty formulaic. Do your jokes and right. Yep. He just went straight, this is me with a hairy back. And we were like, what? Yeah. Amazing. It's, it was the same thing with Joe Diaz. Joe Diaz would write jokes. And they were, mm. but when he snapped, when he just went off, it was an energy that I could, I couldn't understand. I was like, oh, and we would talk about it. I'd be like, why can't you, we were too young to figure out there was no truth in the jokes. Yep. And it was all truth in the rant. And that the truth is really what the audience was, looking was for. sinking into. Uh huh. They were sinking into the authenticity and the honesty of the art, which I think is what, when we think of all our favorite artists, that's really what we're into is the authenticity and the, you know what I've, to me, the perfect combination, and this is almost a unicorn, so it's super hard to do. I think Joe Diaz does it actually. Uh -huh. It's the combination. It's really hard to be relatable and unique at the same time, but that's what the great ones are. It's like, I've never seen that, but I've, I relate to this. Mm -hmm. That combination is uh, is so hard to come by, but when you come by it, those are the people who you're like, that's a one of one right there. That that's what you were talking about upstairs too, a little bit. Like that's what I love about your comedy is you. Um, it's memorable. It's like when you talk about him or all the stuff, the family stuff. It just it it grabs your emotions. You're like, yes, like that's my son. My son is. You're not dumb, but when well, you're when you're young, yes. Yeah, my my son's a my son's a genius. He just got into a great college, but he can't put his shoes on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he can't. Uh, we got we got swatted last night. I, I live stream, and it's so uh, fucked up, dude. So I'm live streaming. Blah 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 blah. You got swatted. I got last swatted night? last night. Yeah. So all of a sudden I hear Los Angeles Police Department. Blah 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 blah. They've got my son, you know, outside against the wall, hands behind my back, and my wife, hands behind my back. And then I come out, guns on me. I've got it. You know, the, the broadcast is still going. And I'm, like, really shaken up. And the first thing I say, of course, is, is my son okay? Is my son okay, you know? And I see him, and he's like, he's like, he's like yo, this is wild, huh? This is cool. And, and like, he's like, he's like, um, is this a prank? And I'm like, no, dog. <laughs> there's forty. There's forty LA. Josh, the, the tactical force with shields. With the riot shields. No. The riot shields. Dude, on so, this street. On this street. Dude, it, it's become this new thing. It happens to a lot of like, uh, like Twitch streamers, um, and their their fans, who are how, how, whatever you want to call them, because they're not fans. If nah, you're they're calling trolls. They're, they, they're they, trolls. They literally, they'll call the cops and be like, yo. There's s some major illegal activity happening at this address. You know what they said? Huh. They said, hi, this is Jason Nash. I just uh, shot my girlfriend. That's what they said. And the call said Jason Nash. How do you, did they tell you that that's what they said? Yeah, that's what they said. And it's just like, and my son is just like laughing. He's like, uh, I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? He's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, well, if we go to jail, we have a story. He's like, and uh, he's like, I know you didn't do anything wrong. And She's just, right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. looking at her. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, super scary stuff. <laughs> Guys, quick break in the action to talk about... Seat Geek. Seat Geek. Geek. We Mitch love Seat Geek. We love Seat Geek so much, and we wanted to let you know that uh, they are today's sponsor, and they are fantastic, Mitch. They are fantastic, Naveen. They're I amazing. Know. They truly are. Correct? I, I love them. We've seen so many shows with SeatGeek. Um, you just go on there. You get the app. I always have the app on my phone. I always have it ready. I always check it. I check it like it's almost like um, like like CNN or something because I love to see- you check the, CNN often? I don't check CNN anymore. I check the SeatGeek app instead and because I love to see what's coming to town. I love to see what's here. Do you get and, your news from SeatGeek? I get my news from SeatGeek and right now- um, <laughs> SZA is coming to town. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so I love to go and check. They have the top 10 events that are yeah. happening in Los Angeles. So I always have the app on my phone. And right now, guys, if you use my code NASH, you're going to get $20 off your first order, which is an incredible deal. 
And SeatGeek has been with me from the very beginning uh, with my career on YouTube. I've been on YouTube five years. They sponsored my videos. And now they were the first sponsor on this podcast. And they've signed on, Mitch, for the whole year The here. whole year. The whole year. The entire year. Literally keeping the lights on. So thank you, SeatGeek. Thank you so much. Go download the SeatGeek app. Go to the link in the description right now and check it out. And uh, now back to the podcast. What were we talking about? Oh, not dumb. You're not dumb. But yeah, you know, when like, I don't know what we were talking about, but when you're this age, yeah. 27 is a little better than 21. Yeah. Even when you're 18, like, I was a, I was a fucking idiot. You, you, I, 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 I was an idiot. 100%. Until, until you're like 30, a guy is an idiot. Real dumb. I would agree I with think, that. Right? I, I agree. Yeah. Not dumb, but dumb. Yeah. That's yeah. it. And I'm not talking about like your acumen or your, no. you know, how you do in school. No. Just general shit. Just common sense life shit. Yeah, yeah, common sense. Yeah, Someone's getting yeah. shot, and you're going to still wait for the food. That's right. That's what I'm talking That's right. about. I, I blame the edibles for that one, but at the same time, it worked out pretty well. But, right. um, <laughs> Jason, let me ask you, because yeah. I, I was trying to, I, I don't know if it's the same with, with women and men, but no, can not. you think of how many times from your youth can you think of your, I'm so lucky I'm alive. Oh my God. I've almost drowned. Uh, I've been in but so just many- dumb sh- Right? So dumb. Falling off the back of a truck. Dumb sh- uh, tr- uh, you know. That's why as, as, and I, again, I can't speak for women. I did not, I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't grow up. I had three older brothers. Yeah. So, but I know from watching them and from myself and from my friends for guys, I had every guy I know could probably list 10 things where you're like, I can't believe I did that. And I can't believe I'm alive right now yeah do you know what i mean yeah yeah, whether it's getting in a car with people who were faced which i think our age probably did a lot more than their age yep with uber and things like that but how many drunk driving how many cars do you think you got into where somebody was faced oh so many Uh, at umass yep at umass yeah (laughs) at the zoo at the zoo yeah we both went to uh we both lived in amherst yeah you grew up there. I grew up there. Amherst, and I went to UMass. We were there probably... At the same time, for sure. Same time. That's yep. crazy. It is so insane to think that a couple of the places that I worked at serving drinks, you could have walked into. Did you ever try comedy out there? Or you weren't doing it yet? The, when I was 15, yeah. I stepped on stage at a place called the Iron Horse in Northampton. The Iron Horse, yes! That was the first open mic. I was 15 years old, and I remember... I had heard about it, and I had been, I had seen some comedy on TV, and when you're the youngest of four boys, you learn to make people laugh, or they're gonna keep punching you in the face. Yeah, right. <laughs> that, <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. That's the truth. Ugh. So, I um, went to the Iron Horse. My parents had to drive me because yeah. I didn't have a license. Yeah. This was my first joke ever. My mom and dad were in the front row. My mom had one of those disposable zip, zip, click. You know, one of those cameras, right? And um, the Iron Horse, dude, we had just had dinner at Fitz Willie's, which Fitz was Willis? across the bridge. Fitz Willie's? Dude, what the fuck hell? Northampton, it's, shout out Fitz Willie's. A lot of Irish uh, bars around Boston. Fitz oh, Willie just sounds like Irish, straight Irish. gibberish. Yeah, Fitz yeah. Willie's was. <laughs> yeah. And so we had dinner at Fitz Willie's. We went to Iron Horse. I walked on stage. My mom and dad were in the front row. I was 15 years old. I said, hey, everybody, I'm Josh. I'm 15. I'm really nervous. My mom and dad are here. This is the first f- time I'll be able to fucking swear in front of my cock sucking mom. <laughs> the place blew up. My mom and dad didn't laugh. <laughs> Man, my dad, it was a silent car ride home. And my dad, when we got out, he was like, you're going to have to find your own ride next time. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Yeah. So, so worth it. Killer so joke. Worth it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, great joke. So worth it. It was so worth it. Yeah. I, I was hooked. Do you know what the second gig I ever had? This yeah. dude who ran that open mic said to me, he called me at my number. He goes, hey, you're really funny. He said, look, we're driving into Hartford. And we're getting hired to be in a department store window, but hidden. So this is pure pre-hidden camera and stuff. We'll have cameras, and we're going to talk to people walking by, but it'll sound like we're in the mailbox. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I was 15 years old, and I hid in a department store window and and wa- and talked to people like I was in a mailbox. Wow. Hilarious. It was like the second time I had ever had a microphone in my hand, and we're doing live improv for people walking down these streets. It was amazing. But I, when I tell you I was hooked after that first one. Yeah. Hooked. You still love it. I went through a period where I didn't. I went through a period where I thought I was going to have to stop. Yeah. Um, 
And um, part of being rejuvenated is is Jacob. Yeah. Just being out there. I, I And now in Vegas, and when I was in, I moved to Nashville when we first moved out of L.A. But I like being around. Here is the best comedy in New York. But the energy is different. Yeah. It's business. There's a lot of desperation. There's a lot of people comparing. Mm-hmm. In comparison and desperation and ego is a bad mix for art. Yeah. And when I went to Nashville, it was so, there was so much camaraderie and there was so much just like, what are you doing? Let me help you with this. Let me do. And it didn't feel as competitive and it really re- rejuvenated me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just being in, and then moving to Vegas where we live now, it's just been. What do you guys do? What do you guys do when you're on the road? Just like you have to kill a day, like a Saturday. Um, it, it really depends. Oh, uh, we we work out every I'm a day. Maniacal. Um, he uh, maniacal is an understatement. Um, Are you? Oh, he's in the gym. Yeah, I, I'm gonna nice. tell you right now. I, he's been working out at least five days a week for as long as I can remember. Oh wow! Like no stop. There were. I mean, when I was in high school, even on the road, you were working out seven days a week. Like mm-hmm. there were no rest days. You mm-hmm. were in the gym for an hour and a half. And look, I learned really early on in high school that I did not like working out with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this reason why. And I get why some people do that. And a yeah, lot of people I can't like believe to, you're going to tell them oh, this. Oh, I'm <laughs> definitely going to tell them this. Um, a lot of people like to work out angry. And I understand that. Like you have a gym playlist. You have stuff that pumps you up. When I say this dude like, when I say this dude like to work out angry, he used to go into the gym, put some heavy whatever music on, and then pick somebody, a random person out in the gym. And for that day, he was like, oh, this dude's talking shit about me. When he had no idea who they were. And so he would just look at them and say, oh, he's saying these things about me. I would hate and, and, he, and he would I be would like, I, motivation. and he would be like, in the gym, he'd be like, he go, we'd walk in one day and he goes, I fucking hate that guy today. <laughs> and he would just start lifting and looking at him like he was like talking shit about his family. Bro, who are you, Ray Lewis? Yeah, like, I'm right. Like, and you know what's crazy? Uh, you're like, what? that guy is out <laughs> to get me, that guy. No. Dude, like doing dumbbell yeah, curls oh, like this fucking guy. Bro. Insanity. And so, and the way, there was one day we were working out and one of the, the dude he had picked to be angry at the day walked over to us and he goes, hey man, you're staring at me. Do you have a problem? And my dad was like, hey, the, the angry went straight to a smile and a laugh and he was like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He goes, I choose someone to hate when I go into the gym, and you just happen to be the dude I chose to hate today. Can and I he was you? like, he was like, so we're good. He goes, he was like, yeah, no, I have no problem with you. He goes, but I'm just using you as a fake motivation for me to kill it in the gym today. And the dude was like, have a great workout, and just walked away. And I was like, that, what is happening here? Like, well, well, can I tell I, you what it was about that guy? Yeah, his I shorts. I fucking <laughs> hated his shorts. Look, I was like, look at those dumb fucking shorts in the gym. They were just shoes? a little too short to too be short. in the gym. Yeah, they were. Little, I was like, dude, what are we? Nuts out today at the yeah. gym? Is that what's happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but yeah, that he also works at, he works out at a very uh, at a much faster pace. Like when we were we were in Vancouver this weekend, and he was like, we got thirty minutes, and so he's doing a set like a super set of like five things, and he'll take a one minute break and then do those five exercises again. Yeah. And I had just done a super set, and I'm listening to Fifty Cent in my headphones, and I'm like crumping in the mirror, like just like in between my sets, kind of like fucking around. And I look over at him, and he's just like. <sighs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, relax over there. Like, I can't work out with him anymore. It just doesn't work. I can't. I can't. I mean, whatever, I can't whatever, do it. whatever works for you, man. Whatever you got to do to get yourself up and ready to. I agree. Well, now I know after. too when people are staring me down at the gym. That might be what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you uh, work out angry? Uh, I can. I, I would. If I'm really, if when I was in better shape, yeah. He looks like he's smelling smelling salts at all times Can when I, he works out. Does I, that make sense? Like I, he's always got that oh, look on his face. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I have a trainer right now. And she is amazing. Yeah. And I and if she hears this, you'll know. But I like to be a little angry when I work out. Yeah. She's got an accent. She's Russian. She's not Russian. Oh, she's not Russian? Nope. Um, she, she's got an accent. Delphine? Yeah. No, dude. She's what? from Switzerland. Oh, st- not sh- close. No. <laughs> Definitely. I know what you're about to say. You know say. what I'm saying? Like, they're not close the to thing. each other, not but not the, the same, same thing. Saria. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> Didn't you pronounce Saria, Saria? They're, yeah. they're like, they're like <laughs> geographically <laughs> close, yeah. but not actually yeah. close. Not close. That's okay. Anywho. But her, her, when she tells me her, when I'll be doing sets and she'll, and uh, she kills me, but then she'll tell me this stupid fucking story in that fucking accent. 
and it makes me so mad, but I love it. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm like, this is what motivates me. Just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but but she but she's amazing. She's the best trainer I've ever had in my life. <laughs> best trainer I've ever. Had. Yeah, he he tells me he was like, she kicked my ass today, and I go, do you? I go, is she the type of crazy where like you sit there and you're like, I fuck hate you so much for making me do this and she's like we'll keep going he goes yeah, yeah like yeah, uh, yeah she yeah. doesn't want to hear i'm tired she laughs at you when you grunt yeah didn't she do like cirque du soleil performance what, oh, she was she's cirque du soleil so oh. she, her and her husband so she, her she's like in when she sometimes she'll show me how to do something and she'll pick up a weight and she's like it's just like this and then i'll pick up the weight i'm like why did you make that look so easy you're like 120 pounds <laughs> strong been training her whole life yeah yeah man but yeah those cirque performers though like Full body strength is ridiculous. Like so the silly. things that they can do on the bars or in the air or just straight body weight with other performers is is my. I love those shows. Have Nuts. you seen any of those shows? The Cirque du Soleil. I've seen Cirque, yeah. I I really. You like that kind of thing. I love. I lo- look, man. If you're, I like good bodies. Like if it, it, I'll I'll watch a dude walk down the street. I'll be like, look at that. <laughs> Yo, killing it. You I know what I mean? Too. I, my my Instagram feed is just the ripped dudes. And I, 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 I and I showed it to my I would find a ripped dude and I'd show it to my wife. I'd be like, check this, check this dude out. He's so ripped. And she'd be like, Girls don't like that. Like, girls don't like ripped dudes. Yeah. You, and and I was like, Oh, like, am I wait, gay? What? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's what? funny? Well, yeah, wait, so wait, I, I actually mean, girls don't like well, girls. Yeah, don't, hold on. Girls do not we, I'm generally gonna, women do not I'm gonna, like. I'm gonna a jump, dude. I'm gonna jump I'm oh, gonna jump I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in this yes. actually and tell a you a ripped dude or a huge dude? A huge dude. A bald yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's funny, like I see a, a lot of people. It's like a lot of memes where it's like dudes are like, "Oh, I'm gonna get in the gym and get ripped after a breakup to make my ex jealous, but also get all these new girls." But then you just get ripped, and all the compliments that you get are just from other dudes in the gym saying how good you look ripped. Yes, yeah. Like you, you never actually get true. compliments Wait, from other women. You know what that's like? That's like shoes for women, because you're not buying your shoes for that's us. Right. That's right. You're that's not buying thing. your. Sh- Right? Yeah, I don't think yeah. we, if women buy shoes for us, they're wasting yeah, their yeah. money. Mm-hmm. But uh, w- women recognize and compliment other women on their shoes. 100%. She, she spends a, t- a ton of time with her makeup and stuff. And I'm like, I, I, I think you look great. No makeup. Did you yeah, just I call would, me a woman for how much I like home. shoes? No, I mean, we like our shoes. Oh, okay, okay. You know what attracts you. a woman? It, uh, ha- being with a woman. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that right? Might yeah, be valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or this, you know, a, a wedding ring. Crazy. How What's long have you been married now? Uh, four four weeks. Wait, that fresh. Three weeks. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. I saw I saw the I saw the twenty three dollar TikTok wedding or, or the twenty three dollar wedding TikTok with yeah, yeah, yeah. with my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah we went in a lope. We went to Santa Barbara and we just went up there. We had we could only bring like uh, eight people, so we just had like my son, my daughter, a couple of friends, and. It was great, man. I saved fifty thousand dollars. Fuck yeah, yeah, right, Fuck yeah, right, yeah. Without a doubt, I can't, I can't see it. Everything's so expensive, and I, it's just, it's just so irresponsible. And I was lucky; she, she didn't care. I was like, we can do it. She's like, no. That's the thing. Like, have the wedding with the people that are close to you. Yeah. If you want to throw a party, throw a party. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or take that money, and do something. Yes. That the two of you really want to do, yeah. or put it towards did, did the you house. Have a big wedding. We had, I don't know what we consider big. I mean, the venue was, the, the hotel was. What was, I'll tell you what was great is that he was four, yeah. right? I was seven for your wedding. Were you seven? Yeah, you were married in 2004. Oh, you were seven. That's right. Yeah. So my daughter, they all my kids remember and they were there. It was so fun to experience that yes. with them. Yeah. Do you know what? That's and what and for you too. Yeah, right. How, that they could remember because a lot of people are like can just look at pictures, mm-hmm. but it's so cool. Did you were the kids in the wedding? Were they involved in the wedding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were there and and um, when involved in the wedding, I mean, we just like read our vows and they were just standing next to us. And then we went to lunch. That was it. And they they were um, you know they drove up to Santa Barbara and um, it, it was really nice. They get along really well with my wife, which is like great. And uh, it's been I, really good. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's sometimes in life, you know, you just get like, um, you think, the funniest thing about life is like, you think that everything's over. At, there's times right. where you think it's like, okay. And yes. you kind of like, you reside on that. You're like, okay, yeah, that's, I did my thing. I'll, I'll keep making YouTube videos. I'll keep doing the podcast. And then one day you just fucking, 
you get swatted. And, uh, <laughs> you know, or you, you know what I mean? I could have gone horribly wrong. I yeah, been, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Could have been dead or you get shot in Cleveland. And, yeah. Can and, I tell uh, you, that's exactly what happened in, like, 2018. Yes. With my comedy. That's exactly. Yes. I had been told over. I said to my wife, hey, I have this hour that I think is really good. But nobody's interested. I'm of a certain age. Yeah. I'm a dude. I'm, there's... They've got a ton of me, and I don't have a big enough following to make a dent, but I'm going to shoot this myself. I'm going to put it on YouTube myself. I think it's good, but this is, I'm not, my money had gone down after Chelsea mm -hmm. because I had actively shed her fans because I was like, I'm not going to survive on somebody else's fan base. I see. I need to start from ground zero, and uh. whoever sticks with me from that group sticks with me, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I need to build my own people from there. All right. Because eventually those other people are going to fall off because I'm not her. Right. 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 And so they had fallen off, and I was like, I'm going to shoot this, and we're going to give it our last shot. And if not, I've written on TV shows. I've sold scripts. I was like, I'll try to make my bones as a writer, stay in town, and and so I, that special, that father of the year, the one that you, mm -hmm. I shot, I went up, shot that myself. I, I think as far as I know, maybe me and Steve Trevino, but we're the first people to really put our stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I remember a lot of my comic friends like, are you giving your comedy away for free? Wow. This is the death of you. And I was like, I don't think so, but I'm going to roll the dice on this YouTube thing. And I don't know, 12 million views later, 13, 13 million views later. So like, I so relate to what you're saying because there's been so many times in my career where I've chosen things and people are like, "Why? What are you yeah. doing? Why are you doing this?" I was on like an app called Vine. Yeah. And people were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" You know. And then I did YouTube, and they're like, "What are you doing?" And now I'm doing TikTok Live, and people are like, "What the fuck?" Are you doing? And it's like uh, sticking with yourself and and betting on yourself is like it's the best. How do you? That's so fascinating to me. Yeah. Because we're around the same age. Right. And so I wasn't, you know, early, younger me, I, I would switch whatever. You start, as you get a little older, you're like, am I, is this too late or am I, right? Yeah. Because you, there's a finite amount of time that yeah. you're more aware of. How do you decide when it's time to switch? And are you an all chips in, dude, well, when you well, switch? Well, Josh, you, you and I have a secret weapon. Which is we have people to provide for. Yes. Uh, so, a lot, all my choices were made about my kids. If this was like my kids need to eat, so this is what I'm doing, and and that I think that's like really a, a, a little like secret in life is just like when you're forced in that direction, you go all in. Yeah. And then you'll you'll see the results. Yeah. Yeah. I, and and uh, I don't know how I answered your question, but you did. And 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 are you a dude? Because for me, I never leave one foot on the other lily pad. I jump. Yes. Are you the same way? Same way. Yeah. There's go. no reason to leave that foot there, right? No. Because the new lily pad, you're never going to find out what it does until you're <laughs> off the other one. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. in. All in. All, all in. in. All in. And that's what I've done with the live streaming. I've gone all in, and gotten like a lot of a lot of people online, a lot of hate, a lot of. TikToks and now I'm like three months in and I'm seeing the tide change. Yeah. I'm seeing people come in and go, Oh, I love this. This is amazing. Uh, you know, and so we've gone from like two hundred in the live to yesterday to, you know, twenty one hundred in the live. That's awesome. It's great. So yeah, so I've been doing that and then um and then yeah, and I don't know how long I'll do it. And then just just wait and see ride it out. I mean, I guess it depends on how many how many more times you get swatted. I guess that yes, would probably be the deciding factor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. That is crazy. I, that, that, I just wish people would do more with their time. There's like, got to be a law, right? We were talking there about is this a law. There is a law. There is one? It's, it's, no, definitely not it's, allowed to do that. Yeah. No, and there are 100% 16-year-olds, 16, 17-year-olds who are just like, oh, this is going to be super funny. They call 911 anonymously, and they, like, they, you know, star 69 their number, so you can't, like, there's no trace to the call. Right. So they just call in, they say what it is, and then they hang up the phone. So then it's just kind of up to the 911 operators to take the call seriously and then dispatch wherever. Then at that point, everyone's just doing their jobs yeah, the way they've been trained to do their job. The like, fucked, up, yeah. fucked up thing about it, Jacob, is I'm like really shaken up last night. I don't like, blame you. Like, yes, of course. I don't blame you. I get a call from a big streamer 
calls me. He goes, are you, are you all right? I go, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. He was like, dude, this is great. This is great news. Hilarious. He's like, he's like, you're gonna get a deal with Kick. He's like, you're gonna, you're gonna get a deal with Twitch. He's like, this is fucking amazing. Hilarious. I think, and I, I was, I, I was in bed crazy. at like 11:30, already asleep, and I was just like, oh my god. I was like, <laughs> it's not what I want. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That like push and pill. There used to be a comedian yeah. named Artie Lang. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, there is a comedian named Artie Lang, and I was a huge fan, and I would listen to Howard Stern show, and he would come on the show, and he would be so fucked up on the show that Howard kept featuring how fucked up he was, but slowly Artie is dying. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's getting funnier and funnier and funnier. Yeah, and like yeah. that, that's like a really dangerous uh, area yeah. to be in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it's also like, I don't know. I, I think with fan bases nowadays, especially, or fan bases or trolls or whatever you want to call them, it's, it's people thinking that, oh, I'm going to do this, and then people are going to recognize it's kind of funny. I'll make it kind of a regular thing, but no one will ever know it's me. People want recognition for things that they do, but never want to come forward for saying that they, they're they part of the problem. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Jason, like, where are you at with trolls and comments on your page? I mean, I have a certain way that I respond. I want to hear. So, and then I'll tell you. It, first of all, if if you're on my page... And it's Instagram or whatever. I I don't block you. I'll restrict you because I want you to think that you're still. But my thing is people are like, why are you so soft? No, no, no. This is free. This is free entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So free entertainment, I get to choose the energy and the vibe on this page. Yeah. If you were paying a subscription, I would let you write whatever the fuck you wanted. Right. This is how it goes. You want to, if we're doing a Patreon, you write whatever the fuck want you paid your money right this is a free entertainment page where i choose the energy and the vibes and i and so if you want to call me soft or whatever sure i'm choosing how what i want to see and have on my pages yeah but i don't generally block people because i want them to think they're winning and i'll take your numbers you know what i mean yeah, yeah, i'll yeah, take yeah, the yeah, i'll yeah, take yeah, the hate yeah, watch yeah, i'll yeah, take yeah, the hate i'll take all that watch. stuff yeah, 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 yeah. but i won't block i won't give you the satisfaction generally i used to block I won't give you the satisfaction anymore of blocking. That actually is like a source of pride for them. Yes, yes. I'll restrict you. Right. That way you think you're still whatever. You're just adding to my numbers, but it goes on deaf and I, dumb I think and that's blinders. where we all need to be. We all yeah. need to be in that place of it's the internet. Write whatever you want. It's only helping us. It means nothing to me. Right. And, uh, and, and of course, you know, live streaming, you really see... Yeah, because you know, you're seeing when, it all live time. When, you, when like, you go back to watch your YouTube comments, it's a couple days later or right, whatever. Right, right. This is in the moment. Yeah, you're and seeing it as it happens. It makes you so strong. Uh, it makes me go like, you feel really impervious. Have you, ha, ha, Has going live changed the way you look at that stuff as opposed to just yeah. reading? Really? 100%. How come? Because it's, because it's, you I've can't seen, filter I've seen it? it. I've seen, I've seen the, the worst and I've survived and, and it makes you so fucking strong. It's, you're just like, <laughs> yeah. I've seen this. Nothing, nothing. You can't say anything to me. It really does. The only thing that affects me is um, our uh, friends or people I respect. The, like that. If I watch a TikTok about that, like that, that would maybe bum me out. Yeah. Stuff like that. What do you mean? Something people say about your friends? No. If I if it's like a, if it's like somebody I know who's got something to say about me, right, right, that, right. that'll bum me out. Maybe. Yep. 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 Um, but, uh, but no, not someone, not a stranger and never, I agree with you. Like if you don't have my last name, yeah, it's hard for you to say something that's going to bother me. Uh huh. It, it just is. It's hard for you to get under my skin. Like you don't have any consequence in my life. So why? I think it's interesting. You and I had share the same perspective, but how do you look at it? For Cause me, you grew up with it. For, well, I mean, growing up with it, like. I mean, there were points in time at, you know, at 16, we were getting, de like, the whole family was getting death threats yeah. uh, for, for no reason. And for the only reason was he had a he had a show on Shark Week called Shark After Dark. Yeah. And so he would just, you know, have people on and they would. It was a silly live Shark Week show. Late night talk show that they aired after the shows on Shark Week. Yep. And I would take, I would, I would take a piss on the serious science stuff because they hired me. I'm yeah. a. 
Some people did not like you laughing at the sharks. Oh, I have. <laughs> yo, <laughs> some people were that defensive over Dude, the sharks. People oh, take oh, Shark Week so seriously. Oh my god! One Dude. of the tweets, the one tweet I remember so vividly to this day, and we laughed about it then, and I still laugh about it now. And it was, it was something it, along the lines of Shark Week is supposed to be educational. Get out of here with the funny shit. I hope you and your family all get cancer. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing about Shark Week that's and, educational. And I was like, guys. No, not at this point. I was like, have you watched Air Jaws? You're watching sharks jump out of the water and eat a fake seal. Like, yeah. what is educational about that whatsoever? Yeah. For me, it's always been like, and this is more developed. By the way, sharks can't get cancer. Why would you wish that? <laughs> <laughs> You know, what I mean? <laughs> they're impervious. And, so. and over the last couple of years, it's become this has become my mentality with it. It's like if someone is taking the time out of their day to come to my page to post something negative, guess what, brother? I'm rent free in your phone. Head. And <laughs> right. that for me Rent is free. the most satisfaction. It's like that is fan behavior for me. You don't follow me, but you still come to my page just to drop a mean comment because you think that's that's what I'm gonna be looking for. Nah, I just know for a fact that I'm living in your head rent free, and that's the best kind of reward. For Every me. now and then, though, I do have to remind him: do not comment back. I usually don't. Lee, you got to let it go. You got to let it. And if you want somebody to comment, I'll comment. Uh But I'm very protective of who who he is and what he puts out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And to remember that, you know, it's harder at this age. But look how, if you look in the grand scheme of things, how fucking lucky and blessed we are to do this for a job. I was Mm -hmm. thinking about this this morning. Like, I can't complain about anything. And if you put out art, somebody's going to have an opinion on it. That's yeah. what it's not accounting. It's perspective. Yeah, you don't, yeah. there's no opinion on one plus one equals two. Right. Right. Yeah, but yeah. there's an opinion on the, on the clips that you watched today, right? Yeah. So, as, as much as some one person might like him, the other person's like, Marlon Brando was the worst actor ever. And yeah. you're like, I don't know what the fuck you're watching, <laughs> but you get, you get, that's up to you to decide, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on a plane recently, Josh. You might relate to this. I sit down. It's Spirit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm, okay, okay, I'll try. I'll try Spirit. It's the, it's the only flight. And I bought the first seat on Spirit. So actual first class. So it's a little bit better yep. than economy, whatever. The guy sits next to me. The guy's great. And we're talking the whole time. We're talking about life. I said, this is great. It's like a comfortable seat. Oh, Spirit's great. Proceeds to start drinking. Starts yelling racist stuff. Oh no. Jesus! At oh, the stewardess, saying like saying racist stuff. The stewardess can't hear him, but I can hear him. And then nudging me. No. Nudging me like you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Ba 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 ba. And I'm like, no, dude. So it went from like I was his buddy. I'm like, no, dude. I I don't. I don't. No, I'm not. And then. And you ever just like don't have a brain? So then my my mind starts going to like crazy places and he goes up to the thing. Uh, Oh, he's no, he says, he says, I'm a, he goes, I own a gun, blah, 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 blah. I own a gun, blah, 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 blah. These people, I own a gun. I'm like, okay. Then he goes up to the thing. No. And I'm like, he's got a fucking gun. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. But obviously he he couldn't have a gun. There's no way he'd get a gun through security, right? Right. Well, Well, uh, and then, uh, and then he fell asleep. Um, Yo, dude, drillers. But Spirit, man. Yeah, Spirit Airlines is, from what I understand, now I've never been on a Spirit Airline flight. I flew one Good for, for you. I flew yep. one for fun because I wanted to see what all the hubbub was about. I've seen some weird nope things on planes. Have you? Yeah, you know, I also like, I've done some, not weird, but, you know, there was maybe the most embarrassed I've ever been on a plane. You ever farted yourself awake? You were asleep. <laughs> And you and you farted and you were like, ah, and then it was you. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ever farted yourself awake? I did that on a plane. And you know, uh in coach they have maybe the cloth seats, but in first class they got I got upgraded. They got that leather. Yeah. There's no hiding a fart in the leather, you know. Nope. And I was up against the window and I ha ah! <laughs> right? And I, I turned to see if the guy next to me noticed and he was just staring at me like this. <laughs> And I go, my bad. He goes, not your first one, bro. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it 
He was He had been waiting for you to wake up to tell you that. He That's actually told hilarious. me, and, he, and I go, oh, I'm really sorry, and I start to go back to sleep. He goes, you're not going back to sleep. I'm not letting you go back to sleep. <laughs> so he was like, you keep farting in your sleep. It's just too much. I'm like, okay, I'll I mean, away. here's the thing. He could have let you go back to sleep or stay awake. Either way, you were still going to be farting. I didn't. No, I don't fart when I'm awake because I'm a little self-conscious. But I, I told him when we got off the plane, I go, I really appreciate that. And I really, and, and uh, I said, thanks for letting me know. He was like, look, dude, I could have filmed it and put it online. <laughs> and I was like, why would you do that? He was like, I know who you are. Dude, Hilarious. that would have been amazing. Oh, my video. God. People were awful, even just to say that. Uh, well, at least Give he didn't do it. some respect, but even to... That's now let me ask you this: Does mm. he fly flat uh, first, and you go economy? Uh, generally, he books us. He books us uh, in the same in in just like uh, economy or economy plus. Um, but a lot of the times, he'll get he'll, they'll call and go. Uh, part Wolf party of two for an upgrade, and a hundred percent of the time. I'm not going to say 9 out of 10. I'm going to say a hundred percent of the time. We'll go up there and they'll be like, "Yeah, there's only one seat. Do you want to take it?" And he'll look at me like this. Yeah. <laughs> and go take the seat. And I'm like, you dick. Um, Can I tell it does, you? It does happen. It happens most weekends. I'm not going to lie. It happens a lot more than I would like it to. Uh, but he class. does get he does get me extra leg room, which is important because I, I, yeah, I don't fit in regular seats anymore. It's First class is not... I remember thinking when I, get, when I start making a certain amount of money, I'm flying first class all the time. And I did for a little bit. And then you know what I realized? That's not important to me. Yeah. When they upgrade me, I'll take it. But it's not. It's nice to know that I can afford it. Yep. But guess what? It's also nice that I know that it's not that important to me. Yes, yes. When, yes, when yeah. we go to hotels, yeah. people are always like, "Are you staying at this hotel? Are you staying at this hotel?" I'm like, "I I like new, so I know it's clean." Sure. And that's it. I, I, that's not that. T- that's not important. The hotel on the plane, and being and making it look like I have all this dough. That's not yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. To me. Nope. It's it, and I'm so glad I got to a point. I thought it'd be like I'm fucking. I'm gonna buy all. I'm so glad that that stuff's not important to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of nice to not be that person or to be dependent on that. Yeah, or to be dependent on first class. Because I'm sure, like you, but you know what? I it's so fucking expensive. It's not but worth it's not, what you pay it's not for the worth extra. It. It's just like I, I've I've flown first class once in my entire life. <laughs> And I didn't. I wasn't even the one paying for it because I was getting booked for a gig, and I remember being like, "Oh, first class, okay, you know, I'm feeling a little nice." And then you know, it's a United flight, and so I get on, and I'm like, "This is my seat," and I'm like, "Wow, this isn't really that much better. It's marginally better, but this ticket was an extra seven hundred dollars for the person who booked it. More, way more, more, way more. And you're that weekend, you're walking away with." You know, four thousand less or five thousand less dollars. That's for for your water in a glass instead yeah. of a plastic cup. Yeah, yeah. I, and and I, going back to what you said about the purpose, the reason why you do this is, you know, if I'm think, am I going to spend five thousand for me to be a little more comfortable, or but like, I I have no problem spending it on him or his brother or his sister. Like yeah, that to me, that's different doesn't matter sure. what, th- there's no price tag on things like that for them that's what's important they're an economy yeah of what, course what yeah mean. they're yeah, the yeah, way back yeah, yeah. Just to uh, but, but that kind of stuff like money on the things that are important to me trips with them them coming to see us uh whatever it is that kind of shit I, i'm like there's no price tag on this stuff but like me flying to wherever miami what well, did you ever that. see anybody with diarrhea on the plane and had to be turned around you haven't had that, have you? Um, I. You heard that story, right? Yeah, I'm Has singing a song you? about it. No, it was act. a big. It was a big story. It was from a big Atlanta it was a big to Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, a big yeah. story uh, late last Dude. year. This woman, uh, they had to turn the plane around and go back to Atlanta because this and woman, light it on fire. I'm assuming because, because this woman, not, this right, woman a, had to go to the bathroom but couldn't hold it, so she was walking up and down like up the aisle to try mm-hmm. and get to the bathroom herself the entire time so there's just video there's a video of them looking at the ground and there's just toilet paper and brown spots up oh, the bro, entire I'd never go on an airplane again can I tell you dude so I do some songs in my act too I saw my name is Fupa yeah, uh, yeah right? so funny so my name is Fupa I live my on, pussy's yeah, 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 on yeah, the second, second floor yeah. I see you Fupa <laughs> uh, um, he so the, the show goes him for 10 minutes me for hour 15 he and I do Q&A, and then I do music. Yep. 
I just wrote a song about that news story. You you're did? Referencing. Yeah. It's my favorite song I've ever written in my life. It's a parody, and it's set to um, Love, on, Love the Brain on the Brain by Rihanna. Yeah. And uh, it's like, I think it's on YouTube. It might be the, the best song I've ever written in my really? life. Really? Yo, oh, my wh- fucking God. I'm so happy. Yo, when he wrote it, he, we he started playing it uh, at, like, at clubs when we were on the road. Uh, the managers would come in on the Thursday nights and they'd be like, how's it, how you been? Like, good seeing you. And he's like, yo, I can't wait for you to hear this song. And every <laughs> night he would come in and be like, I can't wait to play this song again. Oh my <laughs> God. And he, there's also always one line. There's one line that he loves. And every time he gets to it, he laughs, the crowd laughs and he looks at them and he goes, I've been waiting to say that all night. Like he's just, he's so focused on the song, which I love, but he's uh yeah, he's, you're pretty happy about that song. You know, people ask me some about, Laughing on stage because I do laugh on stage. Sure. And they're mistaking what I'm doing. They're like, you're laughing at your own joke. I'm not. I I really, when I'm on stage, I'm in as much of a flow state. I, I've said to Jacob before, I think I might be more me on stage than I am off. Wow, yeah. I'm in such a flow state most times. I'm laughing with you. I I am so in the moment and enjoying. If you see me on stage, I, th- I hope you know how much fun I'm having. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Chappelle does the same thing. I'm I'm laughing with you. I can't believe you're laughing. We're la- I really get involved in us laughing together. Uh huh. It's so much. It's so not me laughing at my own joke. It's me in the moment, either reliving that moment with you. Yep. In real time. Or enjoying you, enjoying it so much. Right, right. I think that's where you need to be. I, I truly... A flow state. I mean, that's incredible. It, it feels like that. There are so many times... I had that once, surfing. Can I ask you about... Do you surf? <laughs> no, I'm terrible. Oh. <laughs> but I was, in, I was in Hawaii working, and I had a day off, and I went out, and I surfed with a, a, another family, like three, 11, three like 10, 11-year-old boys, and a, and a dad and me. And, uh, and it was the only time I had ever been in a flow state. I was, I got the wave, I got up on it and I just left my body. It was insane. And they, they were calling me. They were like, Jason, Jason. And like, I wasn't there. Yeah. It was awesome. That's so cool. Do you surf? I don't surf cause I, I'm scared of the ocean. Yeah. It's I also don't think you have the coordination to surf. Eat my dick. <laughs> <laughs> I hundred, but you don't think I have the balance to surf? <laughs> Put you on a skateboard right now. Put you on a skateboard right now. Okay. You don't think I can outskate you? Not a chance. <laughs> right now, I will go to the big five down the street and buy two longboards, and we'll bomb that hill right now near. First of all, what's a longboard? <sighs> <laughs> Does that exactly? Okay. <laughs> Is that gonna hurt? I think you just lost. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we don't need to buy the longboards anymore. You we know already funny? know how it's gonna go. <laughs> I, I wanna. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's my point. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think that was self-explanatory for who was who would win that. Um, do you get? Do you w- with your kids yeah. and they're with you full time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you like? Are there things? Do you have a thing that you do with each of your kids separately? That's like this is our thing we do together. Yeah. Yeah. What are the things like? What my son and I uh, we. We, we get, it's funny you ask, we, we really get into music minutia of uh-huh. the, he's trying to learn how to record things and stuff. So we'll watch the guy that produced the Strokes new album. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll trade, uh, Instagram reels. Uh, any, anything about that is really what we get into music. Just trying to get, uh, perfect his sound. Cause he's trying to protect, perfect his sound. Just, right. And that's basically what we talk about. Mostly we connect on that. It's really funny. Cause I, I loved your story when you were saying, um, when that, the woman came up to you and was like, Oh, we, we connected over your comedy. You know, I had the same thing yesterday. I like took a shot in the dark and I just DM the guy that made the strokes first album. And he wrote me back and I told him, I was like, thank you so much for like, you have no idea. This is, we bond, we bond over stuff like this. That's super it's cool. really That's awesome. cool. Yeah. Um, and then my daughter is really into volleyball. So we go to the games down the OC. We spend the whole day and which is great. It's so fun and watch her get better. And, it's so uh, cool to have those yeah. things. It's, in, I think it was always, Are all your kids grown up. Yeah, 31, the, 30, 27. Oh, my God. I'm I the youngest. Four, I got four You're grand, the youngest. I got four grandkids. I thought you'd be the oldest. Because mm. he looks so good. He's so young. I got four grandkids. You have four grandkids? 
So when my oldest son, they, he was having his first kid, and he called my wife and I, and he was like, hey, pregnant, so pick your grandparent names, because, right? Yep. And my, I said, all right, call, call tomorrow, let's think about it. Because I, I told my wife, I'm like, hey, if somebody calls me grandpa, I'm ignoring that phone. Like, I'm not answering. I will straight up kick that kid in the sandbox. I don't know that kid. Grandpa, f*** you. I'm not, a, there's no papa. There's no, no. People. Pop, pop. There's none of that shit. Yeah, that is yeah, not. Yeah. Gramps, is, which is, I don't like that. Uh, when he turned 50, I changed his name on my phone from dad to pops. Which I did not like. And so when he turns 60, it's going from pops to gramps. Don't like that either. <laughs> and I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm super I, excited. So he called the next day. My wife, whose name is Bethany, she went with BB, which I thought was a great name. Great. Love it. And he goes, what do you want the kids to call you? And I said, LeBron. And he was like, <laughs> no. And I go, why not? Zero go, chance. You, Zero you chance. said I get to pick my no, own no. name. And how cool. Yo, dude, if I told you, hey, you want to go to BB and LeBron's house, you'd be like, yeah. That sounds like the exact yeah, place yeah, that I yeah, want to yeah. go. He yeah. wouldn't let me pick LeBron. Not so only. Who'd you go with? JoJo. Jo- BB <laughs> and JoJo. Jo-Jo. Not only would yeah. he not like an let R&B you. That's group. Yeah, right. <laughs> In the early 90s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not only would he not let you have it. No. Nobody else agreed with you because I know damn well I'm not letting my kids call you LeBron. Super yeah. What are we doing here? Like, no, no. No, my kids are calling you Gramps. They better not. My my kids. If they are- want to be in the will, they better not call me Gramps. <laughs> you you find it hard to have a life going on the road every weekend at 27? Um. Hmm. Well, I'm in a I'm in a very loving and committed relationship. My girlfriend, oh. uh, she moved with me and really for me uh, to Vegas to really help me like kind of pursue wow. this career. Um, and and try and take it to the next level with you know our podcast and and uh, you know taking trips like this or, or touring on the weekends. Um, and you know it. Originally, you know, stand up was not this wasn't the plan, if I gotta be so honest with you. I worked right. TV production and like live events, so I was a PA for like seven years. Jersey Dude, Mike's. I feel that. Jersey, Jersey Mike's, so exactly. Hard. So I, I did PA I did PA stuff for oh, forever. You worked on lights out. Lights out was worked on lights out. I worked on lights out with David Spade. I worked on that uh that prank panel show with Knoxville, uh yeah. um yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh oh, Eric Andre. Um that was the last show I worked on and I remember I was like I just can't. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And my girlfriend, I told her, I was like, "Hey, I really love that you're moving with me. I know you didn't sign up for me to be gone every weekend, and yeah. I totally understand that. But she's she's really ride or die. She's really amazing, um, and she's she's number one supportive, biggest fan. She believes in she believes in me, which is really really awesome. So you it's keep, you keep working hard, and you bring her with her. You bring her with yeah, you. Yeah, that's you know? that's the goal. The goal yeah. is to be able to work hard so that she doesn't ever have to worry about a damn thing ever again. Right. It's so important. To have a partner who believes in what you're doing. Oh, so important. My God. Do so you know? Important. Dude, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> you have... I feel like I struck a chord. Oh, you struck a chord, my man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so important. Right. I, I was ready to quit live streaming this morning, and she was like, she's like, you're not going to quit. She's like, yeah, you got to keep going. It's so, it's, you're always, you're human. So you're going to have those moments where you waver self doubt to have that person in your corner yeah. is like, so it's, it's <laughs> gay. It's, it's a so game changer. Crazy. It's the most important thing in my life. For How old sure. are you, man? 25. You have a, I've been in a relationship for in May, it'll be six years. Kudos. Get out of here. And the, what you just said about like having somebody who support, like we met in college and she wanted to be an actor and I wanted to work in like, like video production, like film, TV, and right. stuff like that. And we were like, okay, let's. Did you go to move. Nebraska? I did go to Nebraska. Do you know I? I'm from Omaha. Okay, oh, okay. so I, I, Larry the Cable Guy and I. I know Larry. We, well, I mean, I don't know him, know him, but like I know, like <laughs> we did a show. He just first Huster named him. Stadium in front of fifty three thousand people. Whoa, dude! The, I've spent at the so time many days in that, in that was stadium. the biggest comedy show ever. I don't know if it's been beat. Yo, dude, we would stand up on stage. I had never, and I would tell my joke, yeah, and they would laugh, and I would go to the next joke, but there were so many people there, the laughter would come in from so far away during the setup of the next yeah, joke. Yeah, 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 it yeah, yeah. me up. Oh, it's a great God. stadium. It fucked me up. Can I tell you something else? Talk so about- one of my favorite things about Cable Guy, we had so much fun on the road, but before every show, and he played arenas and, right? Before every show, we would get dressed up in rock and roll gear. Yeah. He had guitars, wigs, leather pants. 
we would go on stage as a band called Air Disaster. We wouldn't plug any of the instruments in. We would spend a half an hour on the bus picking out our set list, which were just songs sure. that other bands sang. ACDC, whatever. Yep. Yeah. We would have them run the audio through the arena so it sounded like the band was there. We would do a full run around the stage, pointing to the stands, strumming on guitar, 10 songs set. You know who we did it for? The people setting up the chairs in the arena. Wow. Maybe four people. We at the end of this show that he it was for his special for Comedy Central. That we told everybody stick around for a special performance from Air Disaster, which we were more excited about than the stand up. If you ask him <laughs> to this day what was more fun, your hour set in front of fifty three thousand people, or doing two air guitar songs, he would tell you the air guitar songs. After the show, dude, and we did one White Snake song and one Journey song. Yeah. After the show. Outside, we heard people talking about that band. They sounded just like Journey. We had somebody call our manager and say, "Hey, can we book Air Disaster?" Yeah. At the it was like the Yorktown Fair in Pennsylvania, and then they asked our manager, "How many songs do they know?" <laughs> we only heard two, and our manager was like, "They can play any song ever recorded, yeah. ever, <laughs> ever." I, any song of all time, all they can play yeah. any song yeah. you want them to. That's how. Yeah, yeah. 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 You yeah. know what my favorite part? You know what my favorite part that about talented, it was? Yeah. My favorite part was like, yeah, they didn't plug anything in. They never did. My favorite part was if you zoomed in on the pictures of Cable Guy playing guitar. Yeah. His guitar was just scratched mm -hmm. up because the pick was there. There were no strings on the guitar. <laughs> no strings. There was incredible. the drum set. Like the dude had like oh, nerf. the drum set was real, yeah. but like it was like nerfed kind of. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. It, like the guitar had zero strings on it, wow. and there was just scratch marks on it from the pick yeah. going up it was and amazing. down. Incredible. Oh, the best thing ever. Incredible. But he was so one of those guys just that, that, that that we would play wiffle ball. Every day before the... He had a wiffle ball field in his backyard. He was one of those guys that reminded me Did that this nice is fun. Wiffle? That's cool. He's such a nice I never guy. got to go to the house, but I, the yeah, house he had, but I, if I remember correctly, it like was a like... a wiffle ball stadium? It was like a wiffle ball field with a fence. With a fence with a, and a shit? full-on field. He How had, far is the fence on a wiffle ball stadium? There's a guy here who built a mini Fenway okay. Park wiffle ball. Oh, yeah? In he L.A.? Was, he was a manager at the he in the early 2000s, late 90s. What was his name? I want to forget his name, but somebody listening to this will know. And he built a mini Fenway Park wiffle ball field in his backyard. Yeah, awesome. That, that is really cool. So fun. Uh, I that never got really to cool. go play, but I heard stories, man. Yeah. But, uh, amazing. Look, if I hit the lottery, I'm not going to tell anybody, but there will be signs. And one of the signs is a, <laughs> a mini, mini Fenway, Fenway, Park Fenway Park Wiffle Park. Backyard. Yeah, yeah. There will I be signs. I always say that to my and kids. that will be the sign. What's your sign? <laughs> if you win the lottery, what's your sign? No, but I, I always say to my kids, I go, if I win the lottery, I'm not going to tell you. And uh, and they go, so did you win the lottery? And I go, well, maybe. I go, well, maybe I've won. I don't, I'll give you, know. you one guess. I'm live streaming tonight. <laughs> yeah, so. I, won't be live, I won't be live streaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did you see me go? Did you, you see me go white yet? <laughs> did you see me go live last night? No, Dad, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a true sign, Josh. Yeah. When I'm not live streaming. Exactly. I won the f lottery. Yeah, I'm fucking still live Damn. streaming on a Tuesday, so oh, no lottery money hilarious. quite yet. Uh, let's, all right, let's go out on that. That's fucking great. Oh my um, god. All right. Go see these guys on tour. Go to Josh Wolf Comedy. Comedian Josh Wolf .com. Comedian Josh Wolf .com. What about you? Oh, I'm I'm everywhere with him. Everywhere, so anywhere on the weekend. This is my new full time thing. So oh. anytime he's on the on the road, you'll see me there as well. And okay. our podcast, Hey Man, yes, Hey Man. Which listen, we're we're starting to have guests yep. where we will. I'm so curious to interview other parents. I yeah. want to talk to you about your childhood, yeah, and then how your childhood influenced how you raised your kids. Oh yeah, I find I'll that to be fascinating. One of the things, and and I know we got to go. I want to ask you one question. Yeah. If there's one thing you wish your kids, what's the one thing you wish your kids get from you, and what's the one thing you wish they didn't get from you? I hope that they uh, know when they have kids that, that they'll be the same and and do anything, anything, anything for mm -hmm. their kids. You know, just give them every opportunity and and know how much I love them, and not to take from me. I'm impatient. I'm I'm a, a frustrated. My my kids are so chill. Yeah. And they're just so like even yesterday with the swatting, my son was just like, 
whatever. But I, if, if, yeah, not to take like that frustration and uh, the impatience. I can't wait for this podcast because yeah. it, it, it's, th- we're going to, I wanted to wait a little bit. You know, he had never done podcasting and stuff. So I wanted to make sure we got a bunch under our belt before we started to bring other people on. But yeah, the type of, I'm so curious because when you, Hear people talk about their childhood and their kids is to me when you there's it's the most honest conversations yeah. we're gonna have because you're really not putting any airs on. This is stuff that's important to you. So I can't wait for that to start. But the Hey Man pod that we do with each other right now, it's Hey Man with three A's. It's so cool. It's great. It ranges from real talk where I you know, I talk to him about or he talks to me about his childhood or things that bothered him or things that I apologize for that mm-hmm. come up. To just ridiculous mini cow conversations. Yeah. But it's a it's a good if you're looking for a pod outside of this one, obviously. Yeah, I'll link it below. Hey man pod is, is yeah. we're having a good time. Mm. That's awesome. All right. Well, thanks for being here, guys. Thank, Thank you for having us. We really awesome. appreciate it. Thank appreciate you, you. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Wave goodbye. Bye-bye. Woo!